this is a painful, difficult. <laughs> Keep it in. No edits. This is a painful, diff- <laughs> this is a painfully difficult video for me to make, and I'm gonna try to make it painful but brief. Okay. Uh, Mexi is a communist. Okay, I saw a comment and I posted it on Twitter and I posted it on Patreon and I can try to somehow post it or post a link to it from here or something. Look, um, I don't have a whole lot to say about this. The first time I made a video about Corey McCarthy, uh, now his girlfriend also or wife, they, they both are now YouTube personalities, uh, saying Corey McCarthy really is a racist. Not in a trivial sense, not in a shallow sense. It's not that he got drunk and was angry at his ex-girlfriend because his ex-girlfriend was sleeping with a black guy. I mean, though, that that's an actual example of something that happened on YouTube. Didn't happen to me. But, you know, there, there are situations where people say something under a circumstance. No. In a really important sense, in a political sense, these people are racists. They're advocating po- racism in an intentional political way. I've wanted to address this. But I didn't have a lot to say. That was re- And it, it, that caused the whole storm of controversy. I can, I can be almost certain that this video is going to happen and there won't even be a blip. Nobody's going to care, right? But it's funny. They have something really important in common. Um, Mexi on her channel, I think I can say she really does kind of lie and misrepresent what her political position is. And if you're not ashamed of your political position, why do you misrepresent in this way? Why is there such a big gulf? And this is not an old comment. The comment is stamped as one month ago. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's an approximate time with YouTube. Uh, Corey McCarthy, in response to my first criticism of the first time I pointed out that he and his girlfriend were really preaching racism, really the vile politics of, you know, they're, they're against uh, so-called miscegenation, they're against intermarriage between the races, they want to exile everyone who's non-white from North America, from Canada, the United States, and this kind of... It's, 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 it's real racism. This is not. This is not just that your grandfather is a bit of an asshole or something. You know, it's not somebody who's drunk and mad at it. Nothing like that. You know, this is real. You know, racism that needs needs to be addressed as such. Okay. Um, their response to my just pointing it out in the first video. Really, in the first video, all I do is quote them and point it out, and that's it. You know, uh, they deleted a whole ton of their their past videos. They covered it up. And he made a video on his own channel lying about it and covering up and denying it. And then, like, a couple days later, he deleted that video, you know. Now, you know, in some ways, it was not. But I see this comment from Mexi in which she's openly identifying herself as a Marxist-Leninist, which is what one school of thought within communism, as a communist and a Marxist-Leninist. And she's identifying herself with another YouTuber and in agreement with and in support of another YouTuber, you know, who will link, who supports evidently on his channel the most violent forms of communism that exist in the world today, including currently armed Maoist groups, groups that would be considered terrorists by any reasonable definition of the word terrorism, groups that are out in the field murdering landlords and murdering police officers. Uh, you can look up the different groups. And he's promoting them on his channel with videotape of these people with the, you know, balaclavas on and the red, uh, what's the word, the red masks and carrying assault rifles and the whole bit, you know, yep. <laughs> there's, no, there's nothing subtle about it. Now, it is, it is worth asking, what is the difference between, say, a neo-Nazi hate group that did this or a Muslim extremist hate group that did this and when it's a left-wing communist ex- extremist group that, that does this? There are things in common. When I look at Mexi's channel, so not this comment, which you missed, not her comment on this more more extreme channel. Uh, when I look at um, Mexi's main channel, and then I look at Tara McCarthy's channel, a lot of makeup. There's a lot of, a lot of work on the presentation there. Now, have you have you seen Tara's channel? Maybe you've never no, seen it. No, I've never seen it. But Tara McCarthy also. I, I've got to say Actually, the the aesthetics. I could I'm sorry, I could bring it up right now. The aesthetics are really similar. You know what I mean? I mean, Mexi is is putting a lot of effort into looking like a kind of respectable bourgeois talk show host, and that's exactly what Tara McCarthy does also. And then beneath that veneer are a set of you know political beliefs that. You know, I feel nobody should respect and nobody nobody should take seriously. Now, look, 
this video is under five minutes. I feel like hitting the stop button now. I don't have a lot to say. Just like the first time I pointed the finger at, at Corey McCarthy and said, look, this is real racism. Take it seriously. All I want to do here is point the finger and say, look, don't believe this veneer that, that Mexi is presenting you with the same way you shouldn't be believe the veneer from Tara McCarthy. This is real communism. This is real communist extremism. This is really linked to endorsement of not only the worst atrocities from the violent past of communism, but the worst kind of atrocities in the present and future, which are, of course, on a much smaller scale. It's going to be very hard for communists in the present to outdo Joseph Stalin or even Lenin or any of the or Mao Zedong or whatever. You know, I mean, this there's a pretty high watermark for them to live up to if they're going to outdo the the atrocities of other communists in the past. But nevertheless, as I say, you can see for yourself the videos of these people actually endorsing armed uprising terrorist groups. You know, etc. It's it's no joke. Um, I got some uh, some fan mail this morning. That's you know tantamount to hate mail. But this this fan of mine uh, was demanding to know why I don't criticize vegan gains more. What was it something specific? Uh, yeah, just about his his living such a relaxed life, like a life with no ambition. Like you know, he says, oh, well, you you, you criticize these other people for being on permanent vacation. I've criticized vegan gains a lot. I have criticized Vegan Gaines about his dog and his diet, and I mean, I've I, like I have a playlist of videos, but and he tolerates it. His girlfriend doesn't. His girlfriend. There was one video which I directly called Vegan Gaines an idiot, and and uh, I forget his girlfriend's name now, but she she said that's it. Jasmine. Um, Jasmine. I crossed the line with Jasmine. Will never speak to me again. <laughs> Richard still speaks to me. He tolerates me. So shout out to Richard for tolerating me. But it was like, I have criticized Vegan Gains so much on so many issues. And for me, the most important one, the one I criticized him about first, and that I still do today, comes up mostly on live stream, is, you know, I really do not endorse Vegan Gains threatening to kill people. And I don't endorse him having guns on camera. I, I absolutely do not. I, there's no compromise of that for me. I think that's totally unacceptable. I said that a million years ago on this channel, and I've said it recently. Uh, when I did that interview with uh, Vegan Called Quest, it came up, and so on. I said, look, I'm not, I'm not cool with this. I'm really not, okay? Yeah. Uh, but to me, it was just mind... Like, I can't criticize an infinite number of topics infinitely. I can't even criticize everything Vegan Gain says and does, and nor do I want to. You know? Whenever you criticize people, you have a point, and a lot of those criticisms wouldn't have a point if you... You know, if you if you went into depth in it in a video, you see you see how biased she is. I I feel I have a point. I've got to tell you, I feel I have a point. No, but if you ask me, why do I have so many videos criticizing a natural vegan, as an example? Well, one, I really sincerely disagree with her. Two, I think I really have a point. Three, I actually think the points I'm exploring are instructive for the audience. Mm -hmm. uh, by contrast, you know, a guy like Ted Carr. I have a couple videos criticizing them. They're hilarious. They're highly entertaining. But, you know, I, I'm i not going to have a weekly update. I'm not going to come out here and, I, you know, okay. So, look, I mean, communism has been a huge part of my life. I can give a link to it below this video again. Uh, one, okay, keeping all the way real, an essay that brought us together as a couple. I wrote an essay and she read it before we got together as a couple. And it's really part of the romantic turning point of our falling in love and so on, frankly. She read this essay that I will link you below this video. And if you think it's a romantic essay, this will turn your blood cold. This will give you nightmares. This is an essay that describes what happened in one small town or one small city, I suppose, uh, in eastern Russia when the communists took it over. It describes the slaughter. It describes the surreal internecine infighting. It's the full human tragedy on a small scale of what happened to this town. And of course, the, the main people the communists are slaughtering are other communists disagree with them. But there's everything. There's ethnic cleansing. There's rape. A, a, un, on an unbelievable scale, formally organized gang rape and so on. The, the you know, piratical looting and anti-Semitism all the evils of communism in microcosm in this one town, along with the absurdities of propaganda. They took over the, the they took over the local I was gonna say movie theater, but it wasn't movie it was a live playhouse, right? They took over the theater and started live performances of communist propaganda. They took over the newspaper offices, they started publishing their own newspaper, you know this microcosm, and then in the end, they completely destroy the town. Hashtag spoilers. It it, it, it ends in an even bigger massacre, right? When all this uh, but, you know, communists use these words like class warfare. And I, 
you know what? We heard that joke the other day from Jimmy Dore. You know, the problem yeah. here, the problem here isn't the marketing problem. The problem isn't that they have the best tasting candy bar in the world, but happen to name it cancer. <laughs> So shout out to Jimmy Dore. That's I'm stealing his material there. The problem with class war isn't that the name makes it sound great. I don't know how people overlook the central tenets of Marxist Leninism, of communism, which endorse violence, which endorse mass murder, which claim, as Marx said himself, all historical progress only comes through violence, etc., etc., etc. This is the, the the core of materialist dialectics. Class warfare, you've got to read some real historical examples of what that means in practice. Um, you can look at my essay from 1920, or just now to let tonight, by, by coincidence, we were looking at videos from today, from 2017 in India, where the Naxalites, the Naxalites also known as the Maoist wing of the Communist Party of India, are still hunting down and murdering police officers, are still carrying out face-to-face raids, murders, extortion of the worst kind. I mean, in, in some ways, it is worse than terrorism what they're doing. I know it's bizarre to say that, but the word terrorism doesn't really quite describe what goes on in people's war, in class struggle. When you're talking about going from door to door in a neighborhood and killing the people you consider bourgeois, oh, you can take a look at how, how Lenin defined who was bourgeois and who wasn't when they were going from town to town you know, uh, murdering people in the Russian Revolution and the Russian Civil War and the years there. It, it's, it's heartbreaking stuff. Uh, but look, guys, that's all I had to say in this video. Um, Mexi is a communist with a capital C. And if that's what she believes, you know, I, I feel that she's misleading her audience about it. I think that a lot of people are supporting her channel, some of whom I know within the vegan movement probably don't realize what it is they're supporting. And in the same simple sense that when I happen to stumble on the extent to which Cory McCarthy is really an extreme racist, I just said, look, guys, here's a heads up. A lot of people wrote into me saying, hey, thank you. I had no idea. There were people who supported him. Just they thought of him as a health and fitness channel, didn't know anything about his political beliefs or racial beliefs. I feel likewise that I have to make this video to call out Mexi. Uh, you know, there are two unique situations. But for me, from my perspective, in that one sense, they are comparable. Guys, uh, communism is not a joke. Most people who actually go out in the field, whether anthropologically or in a humanitarian sense, try to work with neo-Nazis in the United States. They normally end up feeling a lot of pity for the neo-Nazis. A lot of them are kind of poor white people who've been in and out of jail. And you know, while they were in jail, they joined a gang. And you know, one thing led to another. Uh, you know, there's a real sense in which the word pathetic is attached to, to neo-Nazis. And I've got to say, right now I'm living in a communist country. I used to live in Laos, another communist country. I've studied communism my whole life. I, I've got to say, I, I can't even make that excuse for the, the communists. I don't see any pathos in what they're doing and what they're espousing. Um, I can't even say that they are pathetic. It may seem sometimes like communism is, is, a, is a joke, but Again, you can just Google the Naxalites in India. You can see that in some ways the threat is still real. The body count is still real. This is a violent, this is an explicitly violent and dangerous ideology. And at the same time that they are arguing, they just did a podcast, Mexi and uh, Privileged Vegan. They just made a podcast that everyone on the left wing should become vegan. I think I can say on the contrary, if veganism is opposed to violence of exactly this kind, then it would be, should be pretty easy for veganism to be defined in a way, for forming an actual vegan movement, an actual vegan party, in a way that would exclude communists for all the same reasons that you would exclude neo-Nazis and more.